All right. Hi, and welcome to the Skeptical Leftist Podcast, the podcast where I talk to a variety of people to spread critical thinking, progressive politics, and left-wing philosophy. And today I'm joined by Kareem from the Essential Libertarians channel and anarchunity.com. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. Super excited to do this. We're going to have a great conversation. For sure. So I guess the first thing uh, I have to ask is, who are you and what do you want people to know about you? That's a, uh, that's a good question. So basically, uh, as a kid, I listened to punk rock music, pop punk, and then uh, I wanted to fit in with people. And then some of my friends when I was 13 or 12 told me, hey, we're listening to this band called Black Flag. And I wanted to fit in. And they're like, that's anti-government. And I'm like, oh, my God, anti-government. I'm like <laughs> eight or nine at the time. But I'm like, whatever, let's go to these punk rock shows. This is starting like in the late 90s, early 2000s. I got exposed to SLC punk. I got exposed to a lot of punk culture. But one really stood out called Crass. And they had a simple message. They were a band out of England. They destroy said, hey, power, the only authority. <laughs> destroy power, not people. And the, uh, and the quote that I really, really love is the nature of your oppression is the aesthetic of our anger, meaning how you oppress us is how this will come out in our art. Nice. So I got really into them. Now, the issue was with SLC Punk, same kind of thing. I had a lot of friends who didn't make the best life choices in the punk scene. And, you know, I got kind of got pulled out of there. And then I found Ron Paul, uh, who was a lot of people know in libertarian circles. And I think on, left on the right people like him, people with mixed opinions, but I liked his anti-war stance on Iraq. I'm like, well, he, he has a simple stance of we shouldn't bomb people. They right. don't like it. I'm like, well, imagine <laughs> that. And I saw your stream on anti-war stuff, which I'm like, hey, Ron Paul was really good on that and a bunch of other stuff. So I became a libertarian, found people like Adam Kokesh became an anarcho-capitalist. But then what happened was, you know, I got disillusioned with being an ANCAP for several reasons. A lot of people are crazy about Javier Malay. I don't see him as like a savior in Argentina. Also, I see that a problem in ANCAP circles is that a lot of people will constantly quote economics and talk about it. But I say, hey, if you take direct action, that's more than all the knowledge in the world. People don't care how much you know, they care how much you care. And it's also coming down to one thing that, uh, you know, a lot of people might not think of is that, hey, there are some really good ideas on the left. I found Murray Bookchin. Uh, I found Keith Preston from Attack the System who opened me up to all of this. And I said, hey, if the government disappears tomorrow, we'd have a million communities in the United States, which I think would be a good thing doing their own thing, having their own system of law. And then we could do democratic confederalism between them and say, okay, the mutualist community wants to do this. Maybe the communalist or the ANCOMs or the syndicalist community wants to try this. And I think that would be a much better experiment than just saying, hey, here's 50 states under a federal government that constantly steals from everybody. So I'm jumping uh, uh, right now. I'm looking at uh, a lot of different stuff from Bookchin, um, particularly his last work, Communalism, Free Cities, and the Left. And I'm trying to find a balance between left and right anarchy, okay. if there is that. I, and, uh, you know, I, there's still people with disagreements about particularly stuff like public uh, and personal property versus private property. Um, I don't exactly know where I fall on all the nuances, but I have the basic concept of what I'd like to see, which is just the ability to engage in, if you want to call it market activity, mm -hmm. free market activity, meaning, Hey, I want you on, you want me on a show or you don't, then I email you and you're like, okay, then you want to sell something that, you know, or you want to create a product online, sell it, you should be free to do that without any regulation or anybody bugging you. But I can see that there would be issues and somebody will have power. That's right. the one thing ANCAPs don't see is somebody, they'll say, we need guns, we need guns, because somebody will have the guns. I agree. 
<laughs> somebody will have the power. Who do you want to have the power? Your neighbors or a psychopath at the top in Washington? Right. And if you think about that, democratic and federalism makes sense. So I'm interested also to learn about Cooperation Tulsa and, and the Communalist Social Ecology Project. And uh, yeah, I've been going more left, looking at Proudhon, looking at Bookchin, uh, learning a little bit about Rudolf Rocker, and you know, of syndicalism, mm -hmm. uh, and how he, uh, how he wants to get those objectives done. And uh, been doing a little bit of historical research on the Spanish anarchists, which I find extremely uh I got my if you're not motivated TNT, by that, I, don't, I don't know what you're doing <laughs> i literally play that play that anthem once a, a day like yeah. literally if that should replace the national anthem if you want like <laughs> should we make a national anthem no but if i had to it would be that i would just yeah. run around saying viva la fi <laughs> um and even though they didn't do everything perfect, I think that's a good example of how you can get working class people to say, hey, we don't need to work with uh, tankies or, co or authoritarian communists, and we mm -hmm. don't need to accept uh, anything from the fascists. We can do things on our own. So that's a little bit of my background, who I am. And uh, I reached out to you because I was watching your show. I saw you had some really good thinkers on there, re-education, Aaron. And uh, I'm listen. I listen to both of them, Anarch. Um, Very cool. I just kind of wanted to uh, talk theory, and if you want to talk some practical things that are going on right now, if you want to talk about uh, the protests or Aaron or anything like that, I'm down. Yeah, sure. I uh, yeah, I guess I'm really I'm pretty curious, like where you how you got from. I, I guess you kind of explained it a little bit, how you got from like a, an ANCAP into like a, a more left uh, anarchist kind of perspective. Cause I, I tend to think of like the ANCAP thing as pretty, like not very actual, like theory driven. Like it's like, I want to own stuff. And so I'm going to justify that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so uh, I'm curious, like where, did you get the crossover from your and cap ish views to kind of your more leftish anarchist views? So it's a good question and uh, I'll answer it by this. The first thing I had a Ron Paul moment. Um, I was actually meeting Ron Paul in Vegas, like looking at a little thing. And then there's a thinker called Michael Malice who had a Oof, made not a my favorite guy. Anarchist handbook. <laughs> yeah. Not, not crazy about what he did because he took just cut. Oh, he does some good stuff, but he took just paragraphs out of a book and said, that's my book. I'm like, if you're going to write a book, write a book. Now that's not, I don't have a personal problem with him. I'm just saying, if I'm going to put out a book and it's just me giving you Bakunin essays, you're like, dude, what, what is this? A book of quotes would be cool, but I don't think I would take whole essays. Uh, but I, I read, a, I read one line. Uh, from a from an old school anarchist, Emma Goldman said, "There's no communism in Russia." Now we're always taught, right? The USSR was communist. That's right. what happens when you have communism, right? No, no. It's actually interesting. I wouldn't even say Karl Marx was a communist because, to me, I looked at what a communist meant, and I looked at Bakunin getting kicked out with Marx, and I said, "Wait, he was right. If you give the workers power, they'll be worse than the czar." And if Marx had listened to Bakunin, none of this bad stuff would have happened, in my opinion. Although I don't have a time machine, I can't scientifically prove that. Yeah. But what I can say is, without doubt, is that communism, the root word is communal, and that should mean communal ownership, not state ownership like the USSR. So I think when Eric Testa says, you know, it must be anarchist communism that's voluntarily desired, He's a hundred percent right uh, on top of yeah. the many awesome qu other quotes he has. Uh, so I, that's what happened. I read Emma Goldman's little uh, thing, tried to figure it out. Once I figured it out, I figured out, Hey, I was wrong. Then I looked at, then I pulled up the audio book Anarchy by Eric Melatesta. And I'm like, okay, all right. Then one of my friends, then I joined a bunch of unity groups with uh, Mad Liberty 
uh, the Mad Liberty Project on Discord. They're really cool. Okay. Give them a shout out. And my, my friend Jeremiah at EXE. And then I, one of my friends said, read Conquests for Bread. So I pulled up the audiobook Conquests for Bread. And I'm like, this is really good. The only problem I had is I'm like, this is not that Kropotkin's bad, but what's a more modern version of how we could do this? Right. You know, what are people actually, aside from theory, what are people doing? Direct action. And Keith Preston from Attack the System had mentioned, uh, you know, name drop Murray Bookchin. And I said, oh, okay. And then I looked at the ecology of freedom. And then I tried to understand communalism. Now, maybe, and so, uh, and what you would call deep ecology and social ecology, how you can live in a balance with nature. Now, I, I have my disagreements with Bookchin, definitely. I, I tend to like uh, different types of, you know, different ideas that come from uh, maybe some market thinkers like Konkin uh, and, and counter economics. So that's right. kind of where I'm standing now as I see Bookchin's ideas as the modern amalgamation of Kropotkin and Bakunin's work and the other thinkers who came before him. That's a modern adaptation of what we would call anarcho-communism or communalism. Yeah. Hopefully that was a good answer. I think so. I, I, I'm like you say, like I am, I don't mind book chain in general. Like you don't have to agree with everything that a writer says, right. In order to appreciate their work. Uh, but I'm, I'm a big fan of the project of Rojava and what's going on over there and kind of the, uh, uh, the way they've kind of tried to structure their society in a non-hierarchical kind of way where no one has the power to make decisions over top of other people, which is kind of how I view anarchy, regardless of what you call it or regardless of what other things you have going on. It's the, like the idea that nobody has that power to impose anything on the rest of us. Yeah, and Rojava is a big one. If you have horizontal or direct democracy, it tends to work better in a small setting. I also like, from what I've seen, a uh, big fan of Neo Zapatismo yep. and Secus Asola so far. Those are turning out to be really, really good. And also looking at the fact that when people say the world is less communist, they're looking at authoritarian regimes like China and Cuba. You know what they don't look at? Autonomous zones that there's thousands of them popping up everywhere and they happen to be working. So to yes. me, Seca Sasola, Neo Zapatismo, Chiron, uh, and other things in pre predominantly South America and Central America seem to be doing well. And that doesn't mean they can't have kind of a, you know, different flavor to each of them. Chiron is not particularly like, uh, Neo Zapatismo, but they're still making it work. So you start to see how these societies work with different ideas. It's also interesting because they don't call, they don't say, hi, we're, we're, uh, <laughs> you know, ANCOMs in Mexico or Mexican ANCOMs. They say Neo Zapatismo. So it's interesting to see that not everybody's like, oh, hey, this is the, or like Cooperation Tulsa, even though it says in the Twitter bio, communalist social ecology. I'm like, oh, cooperation. It's a cooperative. Oh, okay. So right. they all come up with different names and flavors based on the indigenous background. And that's, that's really cool to see. Yeah. Because like you say, like every area, every region of every culture has different context, right? So you have to take that into account when you're developing whatever system you're, you want to put forward in your uh, society. Yeah, I think uh, the, the best part of this idea is that if you look at different ideas of anarchism, you can see where this comes from. Like the, the people, anarchists on the right, which I would agree is correct, say, hey, um, anarchy means that all interactions are voluntary. Great. Well, the le uh, anarchy on the left would say we have to get rid of all hi unnecessary hierarchical power structures. And a lot of people misinterpret that and say, no hierarchy could ever exist. I'm like, well, if I put more time, say, into playing guitar than somebody, well, I might be on a higher hierarchy, but that's not an unnecessary hierarchy. An unnecessary hierarchy is when I say, hey, I can make decisions for everybody here and nobody can put in a vote. And that's yeah. what they mean. 
So when people understand those two, voluntary interactions, decentralization, and horizontal power structures that eliminate uh, any hierarchy, unnecessary hierarchy of utilizing uh, resources or making decisions in society, I think we get a pretty clear picture of how anarchy not only works, but a good definition and even good communities and structures going forward. Yeah, like, I guess in a sense the the idea is you have to reduce the dominance, right? Like you have to eliminate or eliminate the dominance of one person or group over another person or group. So then uh, in that vein, I that's where I, I guess I differ from capitalists or people who identify as anarcho-capitalists because I tend to think of like capitalism as pure dominance in certain areas, right? Like in the, the, you know, the owning of the means of production as, as they say, or what have you, uh, that's like, that pr- puts a certain amount of dominance or power to dominate in the hands of a smaller group. Okay. Like, Here's what I would say to that. No, no, I, I agree with you. All right. So there's two interpretations of capitalism fundamentally, uh, maybe three that I've looked at and you, you can pick whichever one. One is that ANCAPS would say it's synonymous with free markets, meaning, hey, I can take this uh, can that I bought from Walmart, you know, put a different sticker on it, say this is Kareem's water and sell it on eBay for 20 bucks. Okay. Uh, and if people want to buy it, they're free to do it and there should be no taxes. So we agree with Aaron from re-education taxation stuff. So that's a good fundamental start. And we agree it should be voluntary. I shouldn't be like, no, you have to, they're like, you need the sticker, you have to buy it. So we agree with that. Now, there's a problem here. A lot of people look at capitalism, synonymous with corporatism, as an outgrowth from industrial domination from people like Rockefeller, who are oligarchs. I don't think oligarchs should just apply to Russian businessmen who For have sure. accumulated vast <laughs> amounts of wealth and power. That's that's an interesting thing. They're like, Russian oligarchs, Russian oligarchs. I'm like, hey, Joe Biden. Who are the people who fund you? Oh, yeah. oligarchs. American uh, oligarchs. Sheldon Adelson. <laughs> oligarch. Yeah. Yeah. George Soros. American all ol- we got we got American oligarchs. You can put a flag on them. They influence politicians and they buy politicians too. If anybody yeah. doesn't believe that, I don't know what to tell them. Use the internet for like 10 minutes, but we have oligarchs too. And what I see what I do see is that's going from the industrial, the more factory age, maybe ending in the 90s, early um, 2000s, to going to the digital age where we have L- domination by LLCs, where you say, I'm an LLC and I can leverage government power against you. And then they say, well, we're a private company. Well, are you if you're getting subsidies? Is Raytheon private or does it get subsidies right. but a private logo? So to solve this, I think I think a good thinker that can meet in the middle is Benjamin Tucker. And he talks about free markets, not capitalism. I I recommend that. That was the most recent. I'm lazy. I'm listening to audio books, but I guess that works. There's nothing Uh, wrong with that. Make use of the tools. (laughs) But as Anarch says, Hey, freedom is your freedom to utilize existing tools to their capacity. Mm -hmm. And I think all anarchists, mutualists, and comms agorists can agree with that. So I think in my opinion, if you've ever read Rothbard, I'm not, I'm not uh, annoyed. I'm not offended by the term anarcho-capitalism, but I would say, hey, we can make a lot more progress. And I've done this. I've been in a server, a Discord server with all syndicalists. And I said, anarcho-capitalism. They said, haha, you mean neo-feudalism? And I said, hmm. And I went to my friend who's an egocom. He likes Sterner uh, and he mm-hmm. likes... Uh, anarcho communism. So shout out to Lizard Jesus on this podcast okay. and Mad Liberty for helping me get there. And he said, Call yourself a free market anarchist. And I did. And I'm like, I'm a free market anarchist. They're like, Oh, okay, cool. We like markets. I think the difference <laughs> is capitalism means private ownership of the means of production, yeah. but it can also extend to private ownership with LLC and corporate domination, where free sure. markets are just the ability to buy, sell, and contract. Now, I understand that the ultimate goal is to get rid of money. And I actually think if you have enough competition, like if government stops limiting competition and we all can compete, like communal, 
imagine we have a hundred co cooperation Tulsas. Everybody's making food. Everybody's making, uh, growing plants. Everybody's building and doing something. Then yes, I think you either get to close to or very close to uh, a moneyless society. And also if they're organized horizontally and they can confederate, you also get a state List and a classless society. Obviously, hierarchies would exist based on competence. I'm the best plumber. I'm right. the best doctor. Yeah, I think Andrew I'm the is best a... podcaster. Maybe that's you. <laughs> no, probably not. But <laughs> I think there's Andrewism. I think had a really good video recently where he talked about the difference between um, uh, like calling things a market or calling things capitalist or what uh, what was the other thing uh, calling things authority or hierarchy when what you mean is a difference in competence or a difference in like uh, uh, ability or expertise because we're going to have experts right like there's going to be doctors who do medical stuff and maybe they should be the ones that do medical stuff most of the time <laughs> right but that doesn't make them more important than the person that doesn't know those things right I was, so, I was listening to re-education today. It's like, how can you say a garbage man is more important than a doctor? If your garbage doesn't go out and you're relatively healthy, you're like, mm, I kind of need a garbage man. So uh, people put down working class or whatever. I was like, eh, that's a, the exact opposite of what you want to do, especially yeah. people on the left. I'm like, you are alienating the very people yeah. that we want to, quote unquote, uh, liberate or get on our on our side so i think that's a terrible idea i think it's terrible that so many working class people uh still think that like oligarchs or or that controlled opposition like uh um mango mussolini or uh, as i call him deep state don or 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 you know sleepy joe are actually for working class people that can be right. further from that yeah in canada here we have uh pierre polyev who's like the guy that somehow everybody's convinced is on the working class side and he's just like all he's just like all the rest he works in the interests of the corporate elites who you know extract money out of our labor every friggin day of our lives and and i don't know how i don't know how people fall for it but they do but it takes a, a lot of work and education i guess to try and get people out of that <laughs> takes a re-education uh, that's right <laughs> but what i think happens is these people say but they convince you they they come up with clever rhetoric they use nlp i've seen how they do this like i'm a working class guy and my dad was you know a farmer or a truck driver or something and you know i'm i'm one of you guys woo anarcho syndicalism even evo morales if you look at seca sasola you know he at first he was like power to the people woo kind of like almost a bernie sanders type you get mm -hmm. these Bernie Sanders type that are like, yeah, man, down with this. I'm like, Bernie's not anti anti system. Stop it. Like, this is the whole I have a meme on my phone that I've, I've constantly shared. It has Lucy with like a Stalin hat and it has Charlie Brown. It says, hey, anarchists, you know, we'll build stateless socialists this time. Promise. And it has yeah. her with the football. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. Trotsky's just off to the side waiting to murder all the anarchists when they rebel. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, I, uh, yeah, I, I find it's, it, uh, it's as a like left anarchist, like you're often like arguing against both like people who are author authoritarian left and people who are on the libertarian right. And then they're, I, and everybody else is just, completely out of the, like, I don't even bother with them. <laughs> I argue with these guys and these guys and everybody else is clueless. They have no idea what they're talking about. I argue with everybody. I, yeah. uh, I, I argue sometimes even with ANCOMs, argue with mutualists, I argue with everybody. The people I argue with a lot though are the authoritarian, right? The most, the, uh, the fascists, people yeah. who want, uh, domination by core and then i also argue with some of these people um like who say like no kareem no oh what's going on the middle east is terrible oh my god uh wasn't stalin cool and i'm like no no just because what's going on in palestine is bad 
It doesn't mean I'm not going to not pick up a history book and be like, yeah, the Hall of Demore is pretty bad, man. So That's some of these bad. like tanky people are actually scary too. Like, yeah. uh, and look, I appreciate, I appreciate the sentiment. I, I like that. Like Hawes talks about Palestine. I like Jackson Henkel talking about Palestine, but I also know, <laughs> Hey, okay. Everything's hunky dory. These people like, we're going to force tradition on you. We're going to force all the like, yeah. wait, whoa, whoa. Um, I do think I do agree with your, um, it was either you or Anarch you did a video on MAGA communism, and it doesn't make sense. That ideology does not make sense. It's weird. Like, you can say ANCAPs are weird, and there's some things I disagree with them on. There's some things I disagree with ANCOMs on, but MAGA communism is just, wow. I'm like, yeah, I can't make my, wrap my brain around that. You, you can't be a communist and be a patriotic American. I just... How can you do that? <laughs> I guess I guess their idea is uh, they mix communism with fascism, and they're like, I believe in a patriotic, uh, traditionalist type of society. Right. I think it's kind of, I think it's kind of a synthesis. I'm not a, I'm not a um, expert on his work, but kind of a synthesis of like what Alexander Dugan talks about, like where he's like, we need tradition, but yeah. we also need, but he's not tradition in a paleo conservative individual sense. He wants tradition in a communal sense. And I think that's where that comes from, but they don't realize MAGA people don't like communism and they don't <laughs> understand what communism is. Yeah, that's right. So there's that. Yeah, no, yeah, Dugan is like, he's definitely like, I, I feel leans towards the fascist side a little bit more than the communist side, but maybe that's just because I know what communism is. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, yeah, I that know. doesn't help. <laughs> I guess uh, uh, you kind of have, so... We're talking about like you kind of are you crossed from and cap to kind of a more left anarchist and and you kind of you have uh, you say here that you identify as a pan anarchist or a left market anarchist or a communalist and I wonder is there a distinction between those three things? Um, that's a good question. Here's what I would say. I think they all work together. I don't think there is something that I would pull out of that. Um, I think on an individual basis, I believe that panarchy would be the result of no government because people, there's 8 billion people in the world and as governments tend to fall from bad spending, wars, stupid decisions, I think government will go away uh, overall, become more decentralized. So to me, the result of that's pan anarchy. I don't know how you know maybe you feel about like anarcho primitivists, but that they, they exist, uh, mutualists and agorists, and there's probably just some normies who are like yeah, pan. we just have a decentralized community here. It's it's not a thing. Yeah, well, I just was gonna say, and I'm not a fan of primitivists. Like <laughs> I tend to think that uh, it's often a little bit ableist in a lot of ways like it it's very like uh disregards a lot of people with their desire to roll things back but i could be mistaken about how that goes but <laughs> yeah i i say they're respecting social ecology in a weird way here's what i'll say though um we'd have different communities and pan anarchy and and i think mm -hmm. you know the more education you put out there the more you know communities we have so that works and then uh, being a f left free market anarchist, I could say, hey, um, I care about social issues. I care about uh, community, communalism, uh, local governance. But I also think we can democratically confederate with all these different uh, anarchists. So that's where that comes into play there. So it's like, OK, uh, let's say. And Prim Stan says, don't bring this in. We don't want to see this. So it's like, okay, I'm leaving this at home. Honey, we're going to Aunt Prim Stan for a weekend. Bring the tent. Uh, and we, they're, we're going to vote on this or that or, or whatever it is. So that's how that would work. Mutualists might say, hey, uh, we just want to have barter in our place. So that's how we're going to do it. And then 
you work with all of them. Some people might say, hey, we still want to use money. And I'm not necessarily against someone saying uh, we still want to use money, as long as they're not using it to oppress people and are not hyperinflating it. Uh, something like mm -hmm. if they just had a community of people using Bitcoin, like not, not a problem yeah. for me. Uh, now, maybe people disagree with me, but I don't think that's a big deal. So those things kind of roll into one. I believe in small communities, different types of anarchy. And uh, myself personally, I would advocate for free market, free market, meaning I can sell whatever I want and also an emphasis on helping uh, communities and minorities. Not, not everybody has to do that, but uh, that's how I think those work together. Um, so that's what a pan anarchist would say, Hey, this is going to be the inevitable reality. And a communalist would say, here's how we can argue, uh, uh arrange that. Um, I, I like Aaron's way of saying that is anarchism is about leadership and communism is about ownership, but you can have different types of ownership. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I find, uh, yeah, I had a few thoughts there while you were talking. Like, I, I think like, uh, obviously you like as a anarchist say society in general like uh the size of north america we can't go around and like because we're anarchists we can't be like hey you have to be an anarchist in the way that i want you to be an anarchist right <laughs> like so there we have to accept that different areas are going to do things slightly differently and that's just the way it's going to be and maybe we can help each other learn better ways to do things if we're open to those kinds of you know experiences and that's why i tell people yeah i don't want to be like like you know the church people that are there like have you been saved like hey have you accepted bakunin as your lord and savior like please get away from me or like have you accepted <laughs> there are and caps literally i've joked with them um and i've just said like uh hey um, is there anything like if like they post something like a shocked picture? I'm like, is that you? If somebody looks at anarchism and doesn't like Rothbard or doesn't believe in Rothbard, and they didn't say no, so I'm like, oh boy, like there's some people who are just stuck on like you got to do it Bookchin's way, or you got to do it Kropotkin's way, or you got to do it Proudhon's way, or or Zerzan, or even right uh, Teddy K. And to me. It's kind of like just saying there's one religion for everybody. Well, there isn't. Well, there's one form of martial arts that helps you in every single scenario of self-defense. I haven't found that. So I think it's safe to assume there's not essentially one way of decentralization that will work for 330 million people here in the U.S. or 8 billion people in the world. Yeah, for sure. And I think like if we try to be Puritan about like our anarchism, then we're not really doing anarchism right <laughs> yeah like, like anarcho-communism is the only way like oh <laughs> yeah obviously that's not true um even uh i guess zoe baker in in her book means and ends talks about like that book is about anarchists from europe in this time frame right anarchists outside of that time frame don't necessarily believe in do the same things anarchists outside of those contexts don't necessarily mean or do the same things and that's okay we all just have to you know adapt and learn from each other as much as we can yeah i mean that's why i like bookchin because bookchin said hey look the time of marx is gone the spanish revolution was good because it was a revolution that people wanted the syndicalists was a good idea but it's not a majoritarian revolution. We want to involve people and we don't want to involve them with slogans like we're doing right now. MAGA, riding yeah. with Biden, uh, hope, changing hope, hope and change. You know, I don't know what George Bush's thing was. It was just, uh, it doesn't matter. But um, we want to actually involve people. Well, how do we involve people? Well, you actually involve them through direct democracy or horizontal democracy or liquid democracy in their own communities. And I think you should allow them to um, interact on a voluntary basis however they want. And if that means abolishing money, fine. If that means using commerce, okay. If that means some hybrid of exchange and free market economy, I think that's good. And then they can exchange mutual aid with other people. And if we do mutual aid and communalism right, in my opinion, there's no need for social safety nets provided by 
uh, central institutions. Like when I put abolish social security, people freak out, but <laughs> having the people freaked out are people, you know, uh, like ourselves. I think if you're under, I would, I would wager to say if you're under 50, maybe I'm wrong. You're not going to see social security unless, unless we come up with some crazy, but we can get the anarcho transhumanists to get us to live. To like <laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's another faction that's interesting. Um, and you know, there's other ones and Andrewism does a good job to talk about it. There's black anarchism, there's anarcho feminism. Yeah. Um, there, there, there's a ton of different, there's ton, tons of different things. There's green anarchists who are kind of, they're not quite primitivists. And that one's kind of cool. Cause that one's like the, I guess you could even call them social ecologist and anarchists where they want to have like a good relationship with nature. Uh, they don't want to, uh, go full primitivist, like, you know, uh, the Hods or the sand Bushman, but they also don't want to, uh, to just utilize technology, um, for means and end that they can't. Now I'm guilty of it. I, I, I have a crypto channel. I do different stuff, but I like studying these different ideas of thought and maybe even I'll do a channel on it in the future. But yeah, I want people to be educated in every form of decentralization, every form of con every form of decentralized law, like common law, bracket law, all that type of stuff. So they can in turn take that and establish whatever type of society they want. Zapatistas have done it with their own traditions. Now, I don't have any reason to believe Americans would do the same thing because we have different traditions. Or that if you yeah. consider Somalia anarchy post-1991, and some people do and don't, um, they had traditions that were based actually in Islamic law. Now, I don't see that because that has a hierarchical domination um, thing. I don't see people adopting that here. But it was more orderly than the dictator Muhammad Said Bari that they previously had. Yeah. 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 It's tough because like, uh, it's tough to judge, right? Uh, because there's always going to be like transitional stages of things and like, uh, whether something necessarily identity like qualifies as like an anarchist type society or, or region or what have you may or may not really matter as long as they're doing their best to have a liberatory type of society where people are equal and have power in the hands of those, you know, you know, of the, of the average person as well as like, yeah, nobody dominating each other. But yeah, I don't know. Some of still learning a lot about the world myself. So, <laughs> so I'm always learning more about these things. Like, uh, uh, there's different stuff like, uh, like African countries that have different uh, traditions, but then because they were colonized and their uh, their government structures mim were enforced to be mimicked of the colonizers' government structures, then they end up leaving their traditions behind. And maybe if they were in left to do some of their traditionals, it would be better. I, like it's it's one of these. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> now I'm on just rambling. So. <laughs> But uh, I yeah, guess, I, uh, I could, yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say this. Uh, what I think would happen is people would take their homegrown traditions, whatever it happens to be, like uh, in Somalia, it was a customary law called Seer. I could see us, I could see some people saying, hey, I like common law, let's go. There's probably even some like Bible Belt dudes that would be like, I like the Constitution. Let's make that our law. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. But you don't use that for hierarchical domination and you're cool. Don't use that to oppress anybody. To And honestly, I think they should take out imminent domain and any type of coercion in the common constitution. But you could use the American constitution. No one's saying you couldn't on a local level if you're not oppressing anybody else or if you're not. Uh, yeah. doing things that are involuntary. So you technically could. That's how I see it working out. People would just say, hey, these are my traditions and uh, let me put my flavor of anarchism in on top of that or with that. That's what Zapatistas yeah. did. So, Yeah, I like that myself. I uh, uh, Something that I, I was thinking of earlier when we were talking, kind of you meant talking about you being a, a market anarchist or a left market anarchist. I think like, 
the people, I think a lot of people, they, they think of markets and capitalism on the same level, but they don't like, but markets existed before capitalism as we understand it. Right. Like, uh, I guess it depends on what you're calling capitalism and what you're calling like uh like do you just call it like the was feudalism also capitalism <laughs> because the you know it had a similar structure in some ways I uh, okay my answer to this is capitalism is a private means of production so yes technically feudalists could be capitalists if a king said hey I, uh, or not a king, but if so, if a, um, a lord baron, I guess at the time, <laughs> lord, uh, somebody's like, this is private. I'm not working with King Arthur, but I can dominate you, uh, or I can get, you know, I can use coercion through the Catholic Church or through a religious entity. Then, yeah, that's not really any better. Right. So I tend to like, Markets just mean like a, a literal place where you can engage in commerce. So I tend to do a little differentiation uh, when I'm talking to people, which is like, hey, markets mean just, hey, I can buy and sell whatever I want, however I want, everywhere else. Uh, and capitalism can, is synonymously seen as an outgrowth of, of corporatism to a lot of people meaning that uh, it's domination by LLCs now and, and corporations, as opposed to traditional domination of either kings or lords or industrial figures. Now, I'm also willing to say that, hey, if I'm with right market anarchists, they tend to see capitalism as free markets. And that's the issue that capitalism, socialism, communism has popped a whole bunch of different ideas in people's heads yeah now what's interesting to me is you one day you might be like hey i'm gonna say you know nord vpn you know got this stream so okay I'm, you know maybe i get a sponsorship or something so i make you know or maybe i sell something from my communal thing okay so that that might be more of a free market uh idea but then i'm like hey everybody we need to cooperate to do this and it's interesting uh that ancaps will say i hate democracy and i get what they mean by that yeah like yeah the the presidential elections are bs but how but but we get also ancaps are part of the libertarian party which i'm going to the convention and uh they're gonna vote we're gonna vote on who's chair who does this who does which this who's treasurer doing which i'm democracy. saying i don't have a problem <laughs> <laughs> it's like we it's like we hate democracy like i i get it there's a joke biden's a threat to democracy and i know what they really what they mean is hegemony not democracy but i don't think engaging in direct democracy is bad hey everybody where do you want to eat wendy's taco bell uh i don't want to eat fast food it's like okay why and like well i don't think it's healthy because of this 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 and this we got to preserve the planet okay i want to uh or hey i hire someone for liquid democracy that knows more about something like hey cream you know about crypto can i hire you to, to vote on this oh but you're voting badly so you're out uh yeah I so there, there is a there is an aspect of power and democracy that, that, that exists and is ubiquitous, even among market anarchists. And I would say also on the left side, there is a free market spirit where people are like, hey, um, buy some of my stuff, uh, sign up to my Patreon to get some of my content. Uh, they still want to, quote unquote, not necessarily say compete in the free market like they're trying to be the best, but utilize the free market to make um, ends meet. Yeah, I tend I tend to like think of like I don't really worry. Uh, I don't apply say my own Patreon to the concept of the free market. I guess because it's kind of one of those things. Is it's like yeah, this is trying to make ends meet within the system as it currently exists. It's not necessarily the. I, the system that I would advocate for, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, and, and also these terms, like, you know, when I throw them around, uh, they're confusing because the problem is one person thinks this one thing and one person thinks that, and one person thinks that, then we're all at each other trying to fight. And maybe yeah. the thing that we're thinking of isn't that different, or maybe we have the same goals. Like when 
people on the left say, I want people to have a living wage. Let's change the minimum wage laws. Not a good idea. Then people say, no, no, we just need sound money. Okay, I, I agree with that. What if people could figure out their, but instead of saying there's a central way to do it, what if you just said, hey, let's let people figure it out on their own. Okay, well, I want to just do these tasks and then in the community perform these tasks and then I'm able to live. I can go to the grocery store, get whatever I need. Yeah. And then I pay it back and forward. Like um, my friend uh, Rose Lee, actually, I described what re-education was talking about. And I like the word skill share economy because you're skill you're sharing skills. So you can have an economy like that. You can have a free market economy where you still do use money and use that as a signal. And I think this should all be done on a small basis. And I, I, I think one thing that's important is that if somebody has something that's essential for their existence, food, water, um, not, a, not a computer, but maybe electricity to, to run things, that should be always personal property. And then public property should be something that you can utilize to help the community without um, causing a major detriment to yourself. I also do believe in use of fruct if yeah. they want to do that. Like the property you use is the property you own. Yeah, so I was just going to ask you too. about, like, so what do you think of use of fruct? But like, yeah, I, I quite like it myself. Like if you aren't using something, then of course it should be available to someone else to use, right? Yes. Like use of fruct could be, be saying like, hey, um, at one point in time, if if – you said you're in the area with, with Aaron and re-education. If they say, hey, I want to interview someone and they're at your house, they say, okay, Corey, well, I'm going to do this interview. I'm going to use the mic there. Then he said, I want to do it at four. Is that cool? Community concessions. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Good to direct democracy there. Boom. I want to interview. And we go down the line. So use of fruct is, is kind of a, a way to make a middle ground to say, hey, Okay, well, this is a personal property. I don't own it. It's not or private property. It's not public property, meaning not everybody like I don't think you just say, "Hey, random guy off the street, go ahead and use or or random guy in my community in my fridge project use the uh, microphone." But yeah, I like the idea of use of fruct because it's like, hey, we all agree in the community. If we're going to have shared responsibilities, then we can utilize shared property. But it's not actually the property unless you're using it. In my opinion, a lot of things like that's stupid in society, like houses, model homes being empty. Like if the community votes, yeah. no, we're not going to have model homes and we're not going to, but we're not for squatting. What we think we should do is simply say, hey, if you're not using, if the community is not using these houses, then we can help utilize them and help people who, who might who might need. A free market answer might be, hey, I'm a philanthropist. I'm just going to buy people houses. And they're both valid ways to do things to improve social welfare. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. No, I like, I like, I like use of product. I don't, I don't mind like the idea that like, if somebody has the means to do so, they could just provide houses. But I guess ideally, I think that I would advocate for a world where nobody has that power, that level of power over, you know, where other people don't. So like, it's just a matter of figuring out how you get there. Right. Like, I don't think we can have. Again, I guess this is kind of something that you see in a lot of other anarchists in the past is like they they don't believe that like we're going to turn the world into anarchy tomorrow. We're going to have to do a, a social change and, you know, advocate for this and grow people into it and through an, an education sort of thing. Right. But uh, so I guess in that sense, maybe you would have even more, a little bit more. uh communication and a little bit more like hegemon of ideas because you would be growing society in a particular direction. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, uh, I think there's different applications to, to everything, which is 
that there's not necessarily one answer to houses. That's the biggest thing people always, mm-hmm. oh, how do you do police? Well, oh well, boy, that's a whole, like, isn't there just one <laughs> answer? No, there isn't. There's community police. There are, you could get militias together. You could form defense packs between neighborhoods. If people are thing, then you could get, I don't have an issue with people saying, well, I want to pay for security per se. Like, you know, I don't, I don't see mall cops, you know, actually doing what uh, the, the level of violence regular. So, okay, fine. I want a security guard to hire someone to, to protect whatever I have that could fall under community policing, but I want to get that. Or I want to like, Hey, the, the, the policing isn't working. Uh, the way I want to. All right. Then we have two options. We can, you know, really scale it by having syndicates of security and syndicates, mm-hmm. military syndicates as well. And I think, I think if I had the choice right now, not that I do, but if I could just go in the federal government and just rip stuff out, considering I'd rip everything out, but uh, people always ask, well, you know, conservatives freak out. Oh my God, the, the Democrats want to defund the Pentagon. Well, is there only one way to do defense as well? So right, could right. that be done by soldier syndicates? And that's the thing. Or you could you could argue, okay, fine, you want a uh you want uh militias or you know, voluntary <laughs> militias where people interact. Uh, you want, uh, you know, veterans and stuff to, to, to work together to form coalitions. So there's not one answer. And that's, that's a problem. I think anarchism opens the door to say, Hey, instead of central planning, instead mm-hmm. of me telling you how it's going to work, it spontaneously just does like Lao yeah. Tzu says in the Tao Te Ching. It, ju- it just, it just works. It doesn't, there's not a force that says everything will be like this. Yeah, uh, for sure. Heck, if someone got a bunch of cryptocurrency in ANCAP stand, maybe they could buy houses for people. And I wouldn't be opposed to that as long as they're not utilizing that, obviously, to do to be coercive or yeah. to uh, say. But but if yeah, if even Anarch said, look, if you're a really good doctor, if you're a really good doctor in Rehova, you just patch up everybody after they've been fighting. Um, people who have a create uh, the, the wrong version understanding of Islam and, and you just patch a ton of people up and you, you're an amazing doctor. There's no reason to say that you can't have some good luxuries for that. Why not? Like, sure. why, why would you deny someone who's crushing it? Or communal society, or let's say somebody goes out in cooperation Tulsa and they, they plant, uh, I don't know what you plant, but let's say they plant a hundred, carrot plants that and they, they, they uh they work on everything and they're just on every project they're always out toiling in the fields they're always creating barriers creating you know making sure the soil is good to get uh would you reward that person the same as somebody who you know just you know, shovel and and maybe take some and i don't think and i don't think i would um not 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 to impose yeah. hierarchical domination, but to say, hey, uh, is there a way to, and I guess this is the more anca, is there a way to actually gauge, I understand each according to his ability to each according to his, but you actually have to utilize ability as well. So it's not saying that there couldn't be some differentiation of social welfare, even in my opinion, in left libertarian society. You can correct me if I'm wrong there. Well, uh, yeah, it's it's hard to say, right? Because I think it is good to reward like effort in a certain sense, right? Like it's it's good to be like, yeah, you worked really hard, and we appreciate the effort that you put in to make our our community better, right? And and you know, it's, it's whether there's a way to do that as well as you know. So you can appreciate that person's effort and their, you know, their ex- like expertise, say with a doctor or with like a, uh, a writer or, or like a educator or something. Uh, but without placing them in like a, a dominance role. So like, yeah, maybe they can have a better TV or something or, you know, a luxury of some kind. And, and you can say like, yeah, that's what we appreciate you for this thing. But, the person who leaned on the shovel still gets their, you know, they still get to eat. They still have a roof over their head. They still have, you know, 
all the things they need to have a, a sufficient life, but unless they, as long as they aren't putting in the extra, the same effort as say somebody else. But yeah, then again, it's hard to judge because people with ha people have literally different abilities and, <laughs> and maybe the person who's leaning on the shovel just can't do as much as the person who, you know, could do it all, plant a bunch of extra stuff. Um, I don't know. I don't know how the, what the, I don't know if there is a right way to do it, but there's a variety of ways to do it. And like you say, like different communities are going to treat people in the best, hopefully in the best ways that they can. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that, that's, that's my main thoughts on that. Like I'm still experimenting with the ideas and I don't know. Um, I think there's a lot to consider there. Some people want to boil. <laughs> Okay. Uh, we've talked, we've talked a bit about quite a few things, but we didn't get to, uh, your thoughts on the Columbia protests, uh, or the anti-Zionist protests or the pro-Palestine pro protests, whatever you want to frame, however you want to frame them. Um, yeah. So yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Okay. So I've always been pro-Palestine still will be because to me, clearly, if we're going to care about not just the market or care about communal societies, I think one of the most important things anarchists can do is stop genocide. As, as I said, the bigger the genocide, the bigger the syndicalist army. And I, I think we'd be much better off if we had soldier syndicates that actually cared doing something rather than the federal military. Um, on top of that, I, but we don't. So what's the next best thing? Well, what happened in Vietnam? I see the college people protesting. Now everybody has had their two cents. Oh, they don't have suits. They're, they don't, they're not well educated. The one that I think is funny is they're all Marxist. Oh, okay. They all have read Marx and Engels and agree with it. <laughs> or the people say they're all Mao, they're all Maoists. Yes, I'm sure they've all read Mao Tse Tong's little red book. That's just what got it. It's not what they saw on this. They say, well, yeah. that's pretty horrific. I don't think they're even, I don't think. What I think is, I is that, hey, you take direct action. It doesn't matter what you know. You don't have to be like a genius. But if you take direct action, you can get it done. Just like you guys are planting gardens. People go out and protest. That was my main thing is that, hey, take direct action. And even, I'm not advocating for this. Even in the case of what Aaron felt he had to do, I don't begrudge Aaron. I see Aaron as a hero. And that was a big falling point with a lot of uh, my ANCAP friends who said, well, what did it do? What did it do? I said, you're an ANCAP, right? You understand investments take time. So it wasn't that he's going to do that and then magically, oh, we'll change all the policies. But it inspires people who maybe weren't looking at anything to say, hey, I'm part of the military. I don't like what's going on here. Oh, okay. Well, he was just mentally ill. Well, they look into it and they say, oh, no, he wasn't. He was uh, disturbed at what was going on. So to me, that, that that's really, really powerful, in my opinion. Same, and I even had this argument with my co-host last night, one of them, saying, look, I think this will go down more or the same as the monks in Vietnam. That's what another thing that radicalized me uh, was rage against the machine a day and i still you know put on some rage but th th i mean that was a heck of a statement to put on a cd cover and then i found out about them like months self related because they thought social injustices were happening i'm not advocating anybody uh, do that i am not advocate anybody do that in the case of um that guy who did it outside of trump thing uh, and the biden thing i'm not advocating um anyone do it uh, at all. I don't think it's a good idea. I think you should stay alive and, and, and protest and build communities. I think you should um, do activism. And I think you should help people uh, have awareness that, hey, government is not the solution. And this is what government looks like, in my opinion, uh, when it's completely crazy. Now, a lot of people will criticize me and just say, well, you just care about Israel. No, I don't. Um, there's stuff going on with Sudan. There's stuff going on with Yemen. There's stuff that happened with Syria. 
That's bad. I'm not a fan of the Iranian regime either. Uh, I don't think that, that the way they treat women's good. And on top of that, uh, you know, there's, there's other issues going on in the world that definitely need, uh, some care and some look at what's going on with the Rohingya. There's a lot of important things going on. So it's not to say like, well, you know, I just, you just care about this one topic. I care about government, fascist governments not existing. And I care about people even more importantly on top of that, uh, indigenous or not, not being oppressed. Now, unfortunately, I don't see much we can do for the Native Americans. But I saw something really powerful uh, on Instagram that said, whatever you think you wanted to do for people who are Jewish in 1942, do for the Palestinians now. I'm like, mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. And, and a lot of people always have told me, oh, the Holocaust, slavery was going on. I would have done something. Well, that was okay. your chance. <laughs> Here's your chance. You're going to speak. The least you could do. The least, the bare minimum. I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying do anything. I'm not endorsing any type of uh, bad activism. I'm saying just get out there and speak up. Do not do what Aaron did. Get out there, speak up, educate people, give a speech. Does not have to be like the tankies say. You don't have to go buy a banana republic suit that's overpriced anyway. Just get out there. Uh, if you have it, wave a flag, put on a Kifa, yeah. uh, or even if it's an uh, ANCOM or syndicalist flag, get out there, educate people on a potential uh, alternative rather than just this uh, insane corporatist fascist, uh, if you even want to call it um, somewhat technocratic. And, and, and there are some elements of Marxism, I do see system we have. We, we got we got um, all the bad uh, things, in my opinion, meshed into one. I don't really look at it as one thing. Sorry, it was a long-winded statement, hopefully. Oh, no, no. Uh, and unfortunately, I didn't catch all of it because there was some glitches with the internet, but hopefully it all uploaded to to your your server and it'll it'll all upload when we're done the show uh, so that I get the full, I get the full, ass view of what you said but i agree with i definitely agree with you yeah. about like yeah, no, just, aaron bush now because uh as much it, it's the self-immolation is a super powerful statement in my opinion but you can do so much good organizing your community educating people talking to people protesting you know it, it it's it's sad. To, it's a tragedy when people feel that that's their last resort. I mean, I can't say for sure, but apparently, according to Sandra Snowden, one of the whistle, one of the prominent whistleblowers, he had intel that would have got him in trouble. Now, mm. I don't know how big the intel was. I don't. Th I don't think it's even shocking intel. All the intel said was there was U.S. involvement on the ground there, and. <laughs> That's not like, that's not Something like a crazy, anyway. you know, thought. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, there's nobody, there, oh, there's nobody in Ukraine. I pro oh, we have advisors. Oh, advisors. Like, like the Vietnam War. Like, no, they're just, what are they doing? Like, oh, they're just checking it out. It's like, okay. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Well, same, same thing. Uh, now, I don't know if that's true. Uh, this is speculation. I don't know if this is true, but. I think he felt I'm in a rock in a hard place. They're going to put me in jail or I'm going to go insane. And he didn't have much of a choice. The good thing is you do uh, as a civilian, hopefully watching this or say like, Hey, this is wrong. Cause I saw after that um, a lot of stuff just blew up on Twitter. Not only that, but uh, I think it got a lot of people who are like Anarch says, you want people with military tactics to have, revolution them looking at it and i definitely think it's going to have a major impact 20 30 years from now people are going to look at that just like hopefully they did with the monks and the self-immolation now obviously yeah. i can't predict the future but it's ironic history doesn't repeat but it rhymes i think it really does there yeah. and uh hopefully and i agree with him that uh hopefully he you know that that it is free and uh, 
I think he said uh, when it is free, uh, his ashes were collected. Hopefully they can be spread there. Um, because to me, fascists never win, whether it's Netanyahu or Pinochet or any of these people. It's really annoying to me when the worst thing I think anarchists can do, uh, whether it's Ancoms, Sanders or Hillary, uh, or um, whether it's people on the right trying to support Trump or, or Pinochet or even Javier Malay, stop supporting authoritarians. We either go local yeah. government or nothing at all. So Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, we seem to be having a bit of glitches with the internet, so we'll call her a day here, but um Okay. I really appreciate your time. I really had a great time talking to you. Um so where can people get more from you? Okay. So you can find my podcast, The Essential Libertarians. Uh, I do live streams like that. You're definitely welcome. Love to have you. Um gonna check the double check the um, internet. So hopefully the, the good thing with StreamYard is it'll come out smooth so you can do the shorts and everything when we're, we're live streaming or, or I can even get you a Calendly schedule and put that in so you can join one of our live streams where we talk about uh, historic event, you know, current events and even some philosophy. So you can find me at the Essential Libertarians, Cream6633 on X. Cream is on uh, Facebook and Anarch Unity as well. Uh, my main mission is to get all anarchists to work together, so we can get so we can rid the world of globalist institutions, fascist institutions, authoritarian communism, and other variants of that. Very cool. That's well, it. thank you very much again, and uh, yeah, I hope uh, your rest of your day is good. Yeah, I, uh, thank you very much uh, for this uh, opportunity. And I really did enjoy it. And uh, I, I really like what you guys are doing. I want to give a shout out to uh, Cooperation Tulsa. Go check that out because they actually are creating a uh, social ecology communalist project. And I think if we have hundreds of those across the United States, guess what? Not only do we have food security, we have actual cooperation between people and we don't need state or federal government or anything else and we can democratically uh and work together and just to quote uh maltesta there can be no doubt that the anarchist idea did not commit by its very nature opposed to violence which is the essence of every authoritarian system the mode and action of every government so with that right on all right, that's all, folks. Thanks for watching or listening. Remember to share this show with your friends and on the social media site that you use the most. Thank you to everyone who share, supports this show on Patreon. I really appreciate it, and it helps me keep the internet and the power on. Thanks to my top patrons, Some Random Geek, Damian Marie at Hope, Justin Clark, Dan F. Smith, and Lisa Glass. And thank you to all my new patrons. You can stay tuned for the list of the patrons at the end to see your name listed. If you aren't a Patreon and want to contribute to that, you can do that at patreon.com slash skeptical leftist, or you can send a one-time donation to buymeacoffee.com slash skeptical lefty. I also have a sub stack where you sub can subscribe for free, or you can donate once donate per month. And lastly, you can get a paid subscription on Spotify that will give you the same access to bonus content and extra long episodes that is on Patreon. If you can't contribute financially, then a like on YouTube or five-star rating and a review on Apple Podcasts or one of the podcast review sites like Podchaser would be great. If you want to find more from me, then make sure to check the show notes for links to all my so stuff and check out my website, skepticalleftist.com. That's where you can find all my social media spaces and communities. You can also email me at mindofaskepticalleftist at gmail.com. Thanks so much for listening and watching. Uh, make sure to leave a comment on the video or on my website, join your local org, print off some pa posters or pamphlets, and spread the propaganda. Also, stick around for a clip from this episode's post-show chat.
there's collective responsibility. That's not to say that the East is perfect either, but... No, but it, it is, It's. I, I think it speaks to the, the way that people work, right? We recognize the hits, we ignore the misses, we excel, we excel you know, we... Uh, Promote our, our our accomplishments while ignoring our flaws, and we even do it on a personal level, let alone a systemic level, right? So.